Why, hi there, I'm Ron Juckett, and Boxscore Communications presents the 2004 Boston Red Sox Cyber Replay. Tonight, May 3rd, a Monday, 2004. From Jacobs Field, it's the 10 and 13 Cleveland Indians against the 13 and 11 Boston Red Sox. It's a rainy night here in Cleveland. We are here for the first of four between the Red Sox and the Indians. A nice 73 degree night. A little bit of wind out to left field. This has got to be one of the most dreary background pictures I've ever seen. The place is empty. It really wouldn't be empty though, and tonight we have an interesting matchup for you as Kurt Schilling for the Red Sox will face Jake Westbrook for the Indians. Westbrook on the year in I think one or two starts has a 1-0 record with an earned run average of 225, eight innings, six hits, a home run allowed. He's walked none and struck out three. And on the regular season, Cleveland went 80 and 81, which I didn't remember. And on the regular season, Westbrook went 14 and 9 with a 338 ERA. 215 innings pitched, 208 hits, uh, 19 homers, 61 walks, and 116 RBI. And this will be the lineup he will face tonight. Johnny Damon will lead off and play center. Bill Miller bats second and plays third. David Ortiz is your DH. Manny Ramirez. Kind of a homecoming for him. He'll clean up and play left field. Brian Dalbach is your first baseman tonight. Jason Veritek catches and bats sixth. Kevin Millar is in right field batting seventh. Mike Bellhorn, the second baseman, bats eighth. And Pokey Reese is at short, batting ninth. The defense around Westbrook. Lawton, Matt Lawton is in left field. Average range, just a slightly below average arm. Escobar and setter, good arm, good arm, and just below average range. Jody Garud is in right field, above average arm and, and decent range. I'm going to say it's Alcides Escobar, but and center, but I don't want to. Well, I guess I've said it already, so I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me on that one. Casey Blake is at third base for the Indians, not very good fielding percentage and a decent range. Omar Vizquel, the veteran, very good, not great defenseman, but a very good fielding percentage. Rafael Belliard is your second baseman tonight for Cleveland, above average fielding percentage and the average range. And Broussard is at first, halfway decent range and, and good fielding percentage with Victor Martinez. How about that? Not to become an old friend yet, behind the plate. Trust me, his arm wasn't very good. It was probably better than it was for the Sox, but it wasn't great then in average range. And as we said, Westbrook is on the mound. And with all that, we're ready to go. Johnny Damon steps in the batter's box at 301 on the year. Three homers and 13 RBI. And this game starts with a line drive. Base hit in the left. Lawton comes in, and Damon's on first. That'll bring up Miller. Miller at 183, two homers and nine RBI. Don't run Damon. Brown ball to first. Broussard goes to Piscale for one. Back to Broussard. They turn it. Double play. Probably should have sent Damon. Oh, well. So two out for David Ortiz. Poppy hit 500 last week with six homers and 14 RBI. He leads the majors with 31. The other number is 30, 319 the average and tied with a couple other people, including Jim Evans of St. Louis, with 10 home runs. 31 RBI. Just an astounding start of the year. Two out, Westbrook's running. And the pitch, and Ortiz strikes out. He swung on and missed, and Westbrook gets the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. After one half, Boston does not score. Cleveland is coming up. So Kurt Schilling will be on the hill for Boston. This will be the lineup he'll face. Matt Lawton will lead off. Omar Vizquel bets second. Jody Garut, the right fielder, bets third. Victor Martinez, the catcher, bats fourth. Travis Hafner, one of the better DHs in the business, will bat fifth. I think it's Ronnie Villard is the second baseman batting sixth. Broussard, the first baseman, bat seventh. Casey Blake will bat eighth, and Escobar will bat ninth, and they will face Kurt Schilling. On the year, this will be Kurt's uh, sixth start. It's three and one on the year, 36 innings. The ERA of 275, 29 hits, a home run allowed. He has walked, astoundingly, he walked three and struck out 37. Behind him, Manny Ramirez in left, Johnny Damon in center, Kevin Millar in right, Bill Miller is at third, Pokey Reese at short, Mark Bellhorn at second, Brian Daubach at first, Jason Veritek behind the plate. Lawton 
is hitting 274 with three homers and 13 RBI. Chilling pitches. Here's a line drive right to Dawbuck for the first out. That'll bring up Vizquel, Omar, who played for just a long, long time. Gosh, he looks. You know, I saw him play back in 1988 when he was with the Vermont Mariners, the minor league team that's here at the world headquarters in Burlington, or it's now the Vermont Lake Monsters. But at the time, it was an Eastern League team, and it was with Seattle. Anyway, Omar Omar is running a nine-game hitting streak, hitting 316, two homers and 10 RBI. Pitch from Schilling is a line drive right to Miller for the second out. So two quick outs for Jody Garut. Jody is at 282. Jody also played for Seattle. How about that? 282, two homers and 17 RBI. The dimensions here, this is one of these ballparks that came right after Canopy Yard. So it was one of the new wave of retro style parks. 325 down the line on the left, 370 to that scoreboard in left center, 410 to the forest and deep center, 375 to the right field power alley, right center, and 325 down the line and right. Killing is ready. Here we go. Mr. Garut is a ground ball to Pokey. Throws it over to first in time to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. We played one. Boston and Cleveland are scoreless. So Manny Ramirez will lead us off for Boston here in a second with Brian Dubach and Jason Veritek to follow. Manny at 263, five homers and 17 RBI. Westbrook should go about 110 pitches through 11 in the first. Gave up a hit and struck out one. Here's the pitch to Manny, popped up. Martinez takes off the mask and there's one away. Brian Dubach. Dauber at 417, no homers and one RBI at the plate. This quick delivers, and there's a line drive into the left center. Lawton picks it up on a hop, and that's the second Red Sox hit. Brings up Jason Veritek off to a great start. 397 on the year, six homers and 12 RBI. Dalbach a threat to be permanently anchored to whatever base he's attached to. Pitch to Jason is a line drive to right, and Garut will turn it. Watch it go! A two-run shot for Veritek down the line and right, and the Red Sox go up two nothing. The Commodore 64 says that Mr. Veritek's seventh home run of the year traveled 338 feet. And how does the Commodore 64 do that? Through 80s power. The Commodore 64, so 80s, so awesome, so available on an internet emulator near you. Kevin Millar will now bat Kevin at 253, three homers and 10 RBI. Westbrook had been cruising along until that home run. Pitch to Millar as a ground ball to Vizquel, throws it over to Brisson for the second out. So Mark Bellhorn will now bat. Mark at 253, three homers and 13 RBI. Westbrook deals, ground ball, the line foul. So two balls and two strikes from Jake for Bellhorn. And here's the pitch. There's a line drive down the line and right that's gonna grab the wall. Bellhorn is into second with a double and the Red Sox seem to have Westbrook's number. So far anyway, two outs for Pokey Reese. Pokey at 224, no homers and seven RBI. I wanna say that the Sox went one and three in this series. Cleveland took three out of the four, but don't hold me to that. Westbrook, 27 pitches, is ready. Here's the pitch, and Pokey strikes out. He swung on and no. Check swing, no. Strike three anyway, two runs, three hits, no errors. After inning and a half, the Red Sox behind a two-run shot by Jason Veritek lead the Indians to nothing. So Victor Martinez, who looks awful happy at that picture, will lead us off here in a second. He's at 220, kind of a slow start. One homer and five RBI. Chilling good for 115 or so through 11 in the first. And he walks Victor to start the inning. Victor not really a threat to steal. It's a 3 0 pitch up in the strike zone, up and away. Travis after the batter. Travis the DH at 421. Gotta love early season numbers. Eight homers and 23 RBI. Dilling delivers, and there's a line drive that will get to the wall. Damon picks it up. After is in with a double. Martina stops at third, and the Indians are in business here in the second. For Ronnie Belliard, that was right, who also spent some time with the Milwaukee Brewers. Belliard at 222, 
one homer and five RBI. Chilling's pitch, ground ball to Reese. They'll let the runners score, the throw to first for Dabak. Milliard is retired. And Hafner holds it second, that's what you do. The graphic had Hafner moving third, but Pokey looked him back. So Hafner in second, one out, two to one the score now for Ben Broussard. You know, I looked this stuff up before the game and couldn't remember that. Ben is at 182, no homers and two RBI. The pitch to Ben is a ground ball. Wow. So one ball and two strikes to count from Schilling. One out here in the bottom of the second. Two to one, Boston over Cleveland. Here's the pitch. Broussard, it's a line drive. Base hit into right. Hafner stops at third. Broussard is on first, and this runner's in the corner. So one out for Casey Blake. Casey at 291 so far in the year. Four homers and 11 RBI. Fielding delivers, it's a fly ball to left. Back goes Manny in the corner, makes the catch. Hafner will tag and score without a throw. And the Indians have tied this game at two. So a rough second inning for both Schilling and Westbrook. And we find ourselves in a whole new ball game. It's Alex Escobar, who's at 143. No homers and two RBI. Killing's pitch, struck him out. Swung on and missed for strike three. Two runs on two hits, no errors. We played two at Cleveland. It's the red, it's deuces wild. The Sox two, the Indians two. Donnie Damon will lead us off here in the third with Miller and Ortiz to follow. Damon singled his first time up. Westbrook got through the first nine hitters in 30 pitches. Two runs, both earned, four hits and in two innings. The home run by Veritek and struck out two, but still 30 pitches nonetheless. Damon hits a ground ball, line drive right to Billiard. Not a ground ball, it's a line drive for the first out. One out for Bill Miller, who continues to struggle. He's 0 for 1. He hits a fly ball to center. Back goes Escobar on the track, makes the catch for the second out. So two quick out here for Westbrook in the third, and this will be David Ortiz, who struck out his first time up, one of the two Westbrook has. Pitch to David, there's a line drive right to Broussard to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Two and a half in the books. Cleveland and Boston are tied at two. So Schilling is at 35 pitches his first time through. It's Matt Potton steps to the plate. Two innings, two hits, two runs, two earned runs. No home runs, a walk and a strikeout. Lawton is 0 for 1. Killing delivers a fly ball to right. Millar goes over in the right center and makes the catch. One out. Omar Vizquel, 0 for 1. Killing's pitch, ground ball to Pokey. Throws it over, two out. Jody Garut, 0 for 1. Killing retired the side in the first and he's about to do it again here in the third. Garut is a seven game hitting streak. The fly ball to right. Millar will watch it hit the wall. So that hitting streak goes to eight. Garut's on with a double. I said hitting streak. I meant hitting. Pronunciation is good. Victor Martinez has a chance to bring him home. Victor walked and scored his first time up. Killings pitch is a fly ball to center. Damon is there, and that retires the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. We played three. Boston two, Cleveland two. Manny Ramirez is 0 for 1. As we start the fourth, Brian Dabak and Jason Veritek will face Jake Westbrook here in the fourth. Manny strikes out. Swung on and missed strike three. So an 87 mile an hour fastball gets, gets Manny and that's the third strikeout for Westbrook. Brian Dabak who singled and scored at the plate. And he hits a ground ball to Blake. Throws it over to Broussard, two out. So another, they bring Jake Westbrook. That's starting in the fourth rather quickly. Here's Veritek. Jason hit the two run homer down the line and right in the, third, in the second. That at the moment gave Boston a two nothing lead. Westbrook's pitch is a fly ball to right. Garut goes back and he makes the catch on the track. No runs, no hits, no errors. We played three and a half. The Red Sox and Indians are still tied at two. Travis Hafner, Ronnie Billiard, 
and Broussard here in the fourth. After one for one, he doubled and scored in the second. And Schilling gets him to swing and miss strike three. So that's the second strikeout for Schilling. 57 pitches through three in the third. Belliard. Sack fly his first time up. I take it back. He must not have been a sack fly because he's gotten that bad. He's 0 for 1 with an RBI. Billings pitches a pop up. Miller goes over by the Red Sox dugout. Out of play. So one ball and two strikes to Billiard. Schilling's ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a pop up again in the shallow right. Bellhorn goes out and makes the catch. Almost in foul ground for the second out. Now bring up Ben Broussard, who singled his first time up. Casey Blake, who has the other RBI for Cleveland. On deck, should Broussard reach. Killing pitches, and he gets him. On the outside corner for strike three. No runs, no hits, no errors. We played four. It's Boston two, Cleveland two. So Westbrook at 49, pitches through four. We'll face Millar, Bellhorn, and Reese. Kevin is 0 for 1. Westbrook, four innings, four hits, two runs. Both earned the home run and three strikeouts. Millar hits a fly ball to left. Lawton goes in the corner, one out. Nice out. They'll bring up Bellhorn. Mark doubled his first time up and was stranded. Westbrook uh, gets Bellhorn to strike out. The throw from Martinez, who drops it over to Broussard, is in time. So a full count, and he looked at strike three, but it got away from Martinez. So if you're scoring at home, and goodness, why would you? The, the putout will go 2-3. It's a strikeout 2-3. Martinez to Broussard. Here's Pokey. Two outs, and Pokey is one of Westbrook's now four strikeout victims. He's 0-1. Westbrook's pitch is a fly ball to shallow left. Lawton is there, and that retires the side. No runs. No hits, no errors. Halfway home in Cleveland, and the Red Sox and Indians are tied at two. And as we settle in for the first of this four-game series, a nice day at work, nice light rain. Don't know what it's doing in Boston tonight. Go to your refrigerator and pull out a nice bottle or can of Narragansett and call your neighbor. Unless you still owe his lawnmower or something like that. And say, howdy, neighbor. Have a Gansett. Narragansett beer and the Boston Red Sox. Legends together. Casey Blake will lead us off here in the bottom of the fifth. Escobar and Lawton to follow. Casey Sackfly in the second. Killing pitches. A fly ball to left field. The left center field. Damon is there and makes a nice grab. So Schilling at 69. Pitches through four and third. Three hits. Two runs all in. A walk and three strikeouts. Alex Escobar struck out his first time up. He won't this time. Fly ball to right. Millar backs up. Makes the catch. Two outs. In foul out territory. Matt Lawton, as we go through the lineup now for the third time for Cleveland, is 0 for 2. Schilling 76 pitches through 4 and 2 thirds. The pitch. And he gets him to look at strike 3. So 1, 2, 3 go the Indians. Five in the books. We're still tying at 2. Jake Westbrook will face Johnny Damon, Bill Miller, and David Ortiz here in the sixth. Johnny is one for two with a single. Westbrook at 65 pitches. Here we go. There's a ground ball base hit. He's going to go for two, and he's got it. It got through the hole there, and it skidded all the way to the wall. So it's a stand-up double for Damon. And now I'll bring up Bill Miller, who's 0 for two. Two to two here in the top of the sixth. Pitch to Bill is a ground ball right back to Westbrook. Throws to Broussard, one out. Damon will stay at second. And this will bring up David Ortiz, who is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Sox have two runs and five hits, no errors. They've stranded one so far. Cleveland, two runs on three hits, no errors, and they have stranded two. Pitch to Poppy is a ground ball to Broussard. Flips it to Westbrook for the second out. Damon scampers over to third, so Manny has a chance to bring him home. Manny over for two with a strikeout. And here's the pitch. There's a fly ball to left. Lawton will watch it hit the wall. 
So it's an RBI double for Ramirez. Damon will score. The Red Sox go ahead 3-2. to two. Hit on that scoreboard. Yeah, a town scoreboard, I should say, for the stand-up double. Brian Nalbach, the batter. Brian one for two. He is single to score. And we have a rain delay. And I'll tell you about how long that was as soon as I hit return. It had rained off and on throughout the game, and then the sky is about 9.15 opened up. And so hopefully you've enjoyed Rain Delay Theater as, oh gosh, 2004? As hopefully you had a good time talking about how bad the Red Sox pitching and hitting was to the uh, to the not so front to the friendly folks at WEI who was covering the game. John Rich, I believe, was the host of Red Sox Rain Delay Theater. So you know what would be cool as as Kazuto Tadano warms up would be in a rain delay. If you know we talk about Rain Delay Theater, if they actually went out and played one of the old episodes of the CBS Mystery Radio Theater that ran in the 70s. Because that would be Rain Delay Theater. All right, enough of that nonsense. Kazuhito Tadano is on the mound. He has a save. He has no record and no ERA. Three innings, four hits. He has struck out three in real life because his numbers are so paltry. paltry. An ERA of 465, one and one the record. He started a couple games, I believe, as well. 50 innings, 55 hits, six homers, 18 walks, and 39 strikeouts. He will face Brian Dabak, who is one for two with a run scored. Because this is an official game, I'm surprised they restarted it. Pitchers of record will be Kurt Schilling, who is in line for the win. He will not pitch again after the long rain delay. And Westbrook, who is in line right now, will lose it. So Manny's on second. Dabak one for two with a run score. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to Belliard. Throws it over to Broussard to retire the side. So that's it. No One run, two hits, no errors, and a one-hour rain delay. We played five and a half in Cleveland. The Red Sox lead at three to two. Okay, with switchy lefty, switchy lefty, we're going to go with Mark Malaska here as the Red Sox are charged to go four innings tonight out of the pen. No off days. They did the doubleheader and single game yesterday against the Rangers, the doubleheader Saturday, and they will not get a day off when they go home to face Kansas City for three over the weekend. So it's a long stretch, and you needed more than six out of five out of Schilling, but you couldn't do not his fault because of the rain. Vizquel, Garut, and Martinez to face Velasca. Vizquel is 0 for 2. Mark is 0 and 1 on the year with a 12-15 ERA. Nothing to write home about. Six innings pitched, 10 hits, four home runs. He only threw, allowed two in real life. Walked nine and struck out three. Pitch to Omar as a ground ball to the wall. Line drive to the wall. Manny throws it back in. It's a leadoff double for Vizquel. And now he is hitting 10 straight games. So this will bring up the lefty, Jody Garut. See if uh, they pinch hit for him here. Eric Wedge, old friend for the Red Sox. Yeah, that's who's the manager for Cleveland. Jody is one for two with a double tonight. And he'll bat. Malaska delivers. Ground ball to Miller. Throws to Dalak. One out. That's Malaska. Victor Martinez, not quite old friend yet. 0 for one. Walked and scored. Malaska pitches a fly ball to right. Millar in the corner makes the grab. The scale goes back to tag and holds it second. Two out for Travis Hafner in the DH. Travis has doubled and struck out. Also scored. 3 2 Boston, bottom of the sixth. Malaska pitches, and here's a ground ball. Bings hit. The scale will score the tying run on that line drive in the right center. Hafner is on first, and we are tied at three. So Ronnie Belliard will bat. Belliard is 0 for 2 with an RBI. Velasco delivers. Hafner goes down to try to steal, and Veritek throws him out. So one run on two hits, no errors. Score it 
two to four on the caught stealing. And after six, the Red Sox and Indians are tied at three. Padano can go 80 pitches. He's going to go a while, and he'll face Veritek, Millar, and Bellhorn here in the seventh. Veritek with a two-run homer in the second. And hits a pop-up in the right center. Garut's there one. They're happy with that. Here's Millar. Kevin is 0 for 2. Donald's delivery is a pop-up to short. The scale goes by the bag at second and has a second out. So two quick outs for Mark Bellhorn, who does what Bellhorn does best. That was an awkward sentence. One for two with a strikeout. Base hit was a double. The Donald's pitch. Here's a ground ball of the scale. Tong tossed over to Broussard and just beat has it. So that's the sign. Stretch time in Cleveland. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Boston three, Cleveland three. So Malaska will face Belliard and Broussard before being pulled here. Ronnie is 0 for 2. Nice name. Nice name. Belliard also has an RBI. Pitch is a line drive to left center. Back goes Damon. That's going to be off the wall for a double. So not what Malaska was looking for here. We'll stay with lefty on lefty, although Broussard hit lefties at a 362 clip in real life. The pitch popped up, shallow center. Damon comes in, makes the catch. Too, too shallow for Belliard to go to third, and there's one out and a pitching change to come. Scott Williamson comes in the pitch. Scott, eight innings, no record or ERA. Phenomenal relief work. He's allowed three hits. He's walked one and struck out 11. And we're going to lose him to injury sooner. So you got to use him now. Blake is 0 for 1 with an RBI. Pitch to Casey is a pop up in the shallow left. Miller goes in the left and makes the grab for the second out. I want to look while you were cogitating at my pitching change on what Bronson Arroyo was going to do because young Hung, young Kim is in the starting rotation. He will go Wednesday night's game. And so Arroyo is going to be available for some relief this week and will probably will use him. The Sox did use him for relief a few times. And especially if we get towards the back end of this rotation, they're going to need some relief. Alex Escobar, the banner. Alex is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Williamson's pitch is a fly ball to the left. Manny goes over in the corner to retire the side. No runs, no hit, one hit, no errors. Seven in the books. The Red Sox and Indians are tied at three. So Pokey Reese, Johnny Damon, and Bill Miller will bat here in the eighth. Pokey is 0 for 2 with the strikeout. Padano, inning in the third, has allowed nothing and has thrown 18 pitches. Pitch to Pokey is a fly ball left center. Escobar is there, one out. Johnny Damon, the batter. Johnny is two for three. He is single, doubled, and scored. And there's a ground ball. Base hit in the right field. Garut throws it in. We won't try to steal Damon here. They're guarding the lines just in case Miller rips one down here. Bill is 0 for 3. The average is now 177. Here's the pitch. And there's a line drive in the left in the center field for a base hit. So Miller picks up a big base hit. Sox have runners on first and second for David Ortiz, who is 0 for 3. So hot last week, and tonight Cleveland has stymied him. 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Damon on second, Miller on first. Tadano's ready. Here's the pitch. Ortiz strikes out. He swung on and missed on a 1-2 fastball. Two outs for Manny who gave the Red Sox a 3-2 lead with an RBI double in the sixth. He is one for three. He is also struck out. The pitch fouled back behind the plate and the count goes to no balls and two strikes. Padano's ready. 
Here's the pitch. And he struck him out. Swung on and missed to retire the side. No runs, two hits, no errors. Seven and a half in the books. It's the Sox three, Cleveland three. So top of the lineup here in the eighth, Lawton, Vizquel, and Garut. Lawton is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Williamson will at least get one batter, maybe two. Pitch to Ben is a fly ball to right center. Back goes Damon, one out. This will be the last batter as Williamson's pitch count will hit the magic number and he'll turn into a pumpkin. Omar Vizquel is one for three. He has doubled and scored. Here's the pitch. Here's a line drive in the right. They'll drop in for a base hit. So Vizquel is on first. A big night for Omar. He's, out, he's two for four. And with Jody Garut coming to the plate, here comes Alan Embry. Embry, 1-0 on the year, 10 innings, 8 hits, a home run, he's walked 2 and struck out 5, and the American, it's 174 is the ERA. Garut, I want to go up pinch hit for him, he's 1 for 3 with a double. Vizquel, kind of a threat to run, but you don't want to push it, so I won't throw over. Pitch to Garut, he does hit, fly ball to right center, Damon's there, 2 out. He'll face Victor Martinez, whose splits are pretty even. 282 against lefties, 283 against righties. Tonight, he's 0 for 2. He has walked and scored. Here's the pitch. Line drive into deep center. Back goes Damon. That's going to get the wall. The scale will round third. There'll be a throw home. Here's the play. He is safe. 98% chance of throwing, but you make that throw in the eighth just in case. You don't do it in the second, you do it in the eighth. And Victor Martinez puts the Indians up four to three on the, with a double. Travis Hafner is two for three. He is also double. Single, struck out, drove in a run and scored. Here's the pitch. There's a fly ball to the left, a right center. Damon is there to retire the side. One big run, two hits and no errors. We played eight, Cleveland four, Boston three. So Tadano comes out for his third full inning of the and he would be the winning pitcher, pitcher if this holds. The runner was Williamson's, and he is in line for the hard luck loss. Brian Daubach is one for three, followed by Veritek and Millar here in the ninth. Pitch to Dahlbach is right down the line and right. That's extra bases. That's a double. So Dahlbach leads off the inning with a double, and the Red Sox are in business right off the bat here in the top of the ninth. The rain has stopped. It is calm, cool, and collected in 63 degrees. Jason Veritek has been anything but calm, cool, and collected this year. Tonight, one for three with a two-run homer in the second. Here's the pitch. Here's a fly ball on the right. Back goes Garut. He makes the grab. Dahlbach will hold. It occurred to me I probably should have a pinch runner in the ballgame. Yes, of course I know about baseball strategy. So Gabe Kapler comes in to pinch run. He is a tying run and now could score on a base hit. Kevin Millar the banner. Kevin is 0 for 3. Tadano is ready. One out here in the top of the ninth. Boston three runs and nine hits. They've strained it four. Cleveland four runs on eight hits and they've also strained it four. Here's the pitch. Millar strikes out. He looked at a 3-2 fastball for a strike three. So everyone's up on their feet for Mark Melhorn. Mark is one for three. He has doubled and struck out. Here's the pitch. Fly ball to right. That should end the ball game. Garud is there to retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. That's it. Cleveland takes the opener in this four game set. Four to three. The totals 
in a moment. All right, time for the Commodore VIC-20 post-game show. The Commodore VIC-20, a computer is so simple, anyone can use it, even your cat. Well, this was not what the Red Sox wanted. They lose tonight 4-3. to Did I, I think I neglected to tell you that the White Sox beat Baltimore tonight 5-3. to I played that one before. And so the Sox had a chance to get a one-game cushion over the Orioles, but they both lose tonight. And so they are tied two games behind the Isla Yankees. The Red Sox scored two in the second on the home run by Jason Veritek. They added one more in the sixth, and that was it. Three runs and nine hits, no errors. Cleveland, who played a pretty good ball game behind Jake Westbrook, two, at, two in the second, one in the sixth, and the go-ahead run in the eighth. So Mark Malaska will get the—oh, Kurt Schilling goes five innings, three hits, two runs, both earned, no homers. He walked one and struck out four and was pulled after 79 pitches because of a 54-minute rain delay in the top of the sixth. Kind of threw everyone off. So Malaska gets the blown save, getting in the third three hits a run was earned. Williamson gets the hard luck loss. One inning, one hit, a run it was earned, but he was not on the mound when the run happened. Alan Embry goes two-thirds of an inning, allows, it, allows the game-winning hit. Jake Westbrook, also a victim of the rain, was pitching quite well until the rains hit five and two-thirds inning, six hits, three hits, three runs, all earned, a home run, and he struck out four. But Tadano, who in my view was the MVP, comes in for three and a third innings of great relief, three hits and three strikeouts. He picks up the win, his first of the year. He goes to 1-0 Williamson with a loss. He is 0-1. Homer, Veritek had the only homer. So three hours and one minute to actually play the game, and then you throw in the rain delay, and it was a long night in Boston or Cleveland. They give the MV, the Vic 20 gives the MVP to Vizquel. I don't agree. Sox strand five, Cleveland strand four. What did the computer like about Vizquel? Yeah, very good game. Even two for four with a double. No, I'm going to give it to Tadano who kept Cleveland in, and I'm surprised wasn't yanked for a closer in the ninth. So that'll do it for us. We'll play another one, the Tuesday night game. It's a four-game set, remember. So the Sox and Cleveland will be back with you the next time. I'm Ron Juckett. Good night.